Hi, today I want to talk about how to imagine in English and specifically using what we call conditional sentences type 2 and remember this is just about imagining stuff for example if I were a, if I were a king I would have my own palace for example my own big palace for example if I were a king I'm just imagining I'm not a king and I don't think I'm gonna be a king one day okay so what I'm doing is I'm imagining if I were a king, I would have my own palace. Palace is a big place where the kings live. Okay, so today we're talking about conditional sentences type 2. As I have already told you, okay, why do we use it? We use it to imagine a situation that's very unlikely, almost impossible, very unlikely and sometimes impossible to happen. And the situation we're talking about is about a present situation. Now I'm imagining, now I'm thinking, okay? So it's not about a past. Even though you might see from the form that it's simple past. Okay, one another. Let me give you another example. If I met a king, imagine that that king is King Salman, for example, the king of Saudi Arabia. If I met a king, I would eat lunch with him. Now let us get to the form. This is the, the part, the clause that has if at the beginning and for which or in which situation, in this situation I use simple past. And you know simple past means using verb to. And in the second part, the imaginary situation that could happen, for example, in that I used would plus verb one, would eat, would plus verb one, what I call verb one, okay, would eat lunch with them. So this is how the form is. Uh, you have if clause, and if the if clause you have a simple past, and the second part you have would plus verb one. And this is not about a past, it is a present situation, but I'm just imagining. And this is how we distinguish it, being imaginary, because I'm using this stuff. Verb two here, would plus verb one. Okay, okay, so I have already talked about it, the form, uh, okay, so let me give you uh, more examples. How do we make questions? How do I make a question for this sentence, for example? What would you do? What would you do if you met a king? What would you do if you met a king? Okay, and lots of answers I have got for you here. If I met a king, I would eat lunch with him. And this way, it's like I'm sure I can see it. I'm sure about it, even though it's not going to happen. Or I can use could. And when you say could, it's something like um, I would be able to, I would be able to ask him for a gift. I could ask him for a gift. It's like I would be able to ask for a gift. Or you can even use might. You can use, even use might, and you can think of it like, would probably. I would probably tell him all my problems. I would probably. But instead I said, might. So, you can use would, you can use could, you can use might, especially when you're not very clear. And the negative form can be like this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shy to talk to him. So, these are my examples again. If I met a king, I would eat lunch with him. I can see it clearly. It's a nice dream then. If I met a king, I could ask him for a gift. A big gift, like a Ferrari. If I met a king, I might tell him all my problems. And if I met a king, I wouldn't be shy to talk to him. Okay, so these were all options. Here I added I'd. It's the contraction or a small form of I would. And I can use it especially when I want to answer the question using one part. For example, what would you do if you met a king? I'd eat lunch with him. I'd eat lunch with him. No need to say if I met a king. Because, you know, the situation is presented here. Using if. Okay, so you can simply say, I'd, I'd eat lunch with him. So that's the case is done. Okay, so this one is almost impossible. It's very unlikely, but it can happen in this world. But how about this one? If I were you, if I were you, 
I would quit smoking. You smoke a lot. You should quit smoking, by the way. So, just kidding. I would quit smoking. But I'm not you, and I can never be you. Okay? So this is what's going to happen. If I were verb to, you, and the second part includes would plus verb one, quit. Quit means stop. Okay, um, <clears throat> what are the notes? Okay, I've noticed, I think I've read somewhere, grammatically speaking, we're supposed to say where with I, he, she, we, they, you, with all pronouns. But um, I think it's also acceptable, especially in British English. This was American, I'm talking. If I were you, Amer for American English, as far as I know, you can simply use were with all subjects. If I were, if she were, if they were. Okay. And uh, but if you, when it comes to British English, I think it's acceptable also to say if I was. You can so you can say you can use both actually. If I were you, and if I was you, both are correct. I would quit smoking. I had uh, one last note here, which is um, having a comma. And you know, you can do some inversion when you have if clause, if clauses, or conditional sentences. For, so I can either say, if I were you, I would quit smoking, or I would quit smoking if I were you. But in that case, I'm not going to have the, the comma. I'm going to drop it. So I, I hope these stuff are, you know, clear for you. This is what we call conditional sentences. Type 2, what we're talking about is an imaginary situation, a hypothetical situation, a situation was not, which is not real. I'm just thinking about it at the present time. And thanks for watching.